Tank number two, coming up on Ryan Flies. Hey y'all, here's the deal. Uh, there's nothing really unique about the left tank when comparing it to the right tank. In fact, it's almost identical. Uh, you've seen this all before. So, I'm gonna try to catch some unique angles. I may focus in on some things that maybe I glossed over the first time around, but for the most part, both in real life and on the video, I'm gonna try to just blast through this as quickly as possible. Then we'll get to moving on the leading edges of the wings and getting those skins on. So, hold on tight, here we go. One thing I won't be doing is countersinking these with the plastic on. That was stupid. Got the skin uh, nearly there. Uh, we've got it scuffed. I'm going to clean it. And we got to dimple it. We got a few other things to hit. We got to do the ribs. And then we'll start putting this bad boy together. Enjoying yourself? You know what to do. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. I'm doing the vent line before I put the end ribs on because somebody on my last video was like, hey, there's a way easier way to do that, dude. Thank you. There is. You're right. Fuel pickup with the sleeve. <laughs> Only one time this time. I just jinxed myself.
Holy cow, a fuel tank in uh, about four minutes. Uh, I assure you it took a little longer than that in real life, but not much. I was cooking through that thing. Uh, I was confident, fresh off the success of the first tank. I haven't, however, tested it, so we're not sure if uh, I will regret moving so quickly. I don't think we will, uh, but I'm waiting for the fittings in the mail. They're a little delayed. Something I have received uh, that I wanted to share with everyone is this, uh, a boroscope. Um, you're going to see me using this a lot in the upcoming films. Uh, this is a camera, a, a Wi-Fi camera that will hook up to your phone that allows you to get into tight areas uh, and do things like inspect rivets, inspect sealant um, and it actually has a couple attachments on the tip so you can find that screw and then hit it with a magnet or find that cable and, and grab it with a hook. Um, this is I think going to be a very valuable tool and if you are starting a build of your own you might want to start shopping for these. I did use it to take a look at the baffle seals in the tank that I just built. Uh, they look fantastic. They look exactly like they should. And so that was kind of exciting to take a peek. Again, we won't know if they're actually sealed for a couple days yet. So what is up next? Uh, it's the leading edges, of course. Uh, think of those as fuel tanks without the sealant and fittings. They're, they're built much the same, but should be quite a bit easier and move a little more quickly. After that, we're gonna attach the top skins to the wing. And that's when I feel the wing really starts to become a wing. Um, it, it will solidify the structure enough that they will come off of this jig and go into the cradle that I built uh, a few weeks back. Uh, and then we can work on a number of things. I will hold short of installing the bottom skins. I don't want those in yet because I want to have some easy access for things like pedo lines and pedo hardware, autopilot servos, wiring, and wingtip lighting. Um, so that's what you're going to see in the next coming episodes and what you're going to catch a glimpse of me starting right now. I may have pre-drilled all of the skins per the instructions, but one thing that I do remember is that all of these still need to be pre-drilled. So all of this, again, will have to be drilled, then deburred, then dimpled, just like everything else. Now that the pieces going into the spar are pre-drilled, I'm gonna remove the leading edge and finish the rest on the table. Now, if you remember back a couple episodes, I was agonizing about what to do with the stall warning system. This is that access hatch. Um, if you're wondering why I have half my Clecos uh, out of the tub and attaching this thing on, it's because all of these dimples seem to distort the piece. And this was to, I guess, prove to myself that it will, in fact, lay flat when riveted. I'm concerned now that dimpling the hatch itself is gonna have a similar consequence, uh, but it's too thin to countersink, so I don't know what else to do. Guess we'll just try it. And with that, I'm all out of footage. Um, if you're wondering, that access hatch actually wound up looking great. I was needlessly concerned. Hey, next time we'll pick it up right where we're leaving off with the leading edges of the wings. As always, thank you so much for your comments and your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate it. See you next time.